The purpose of this video is to introduce you to pivot tables and to show you how easy it is to use the basic commands for pivot tables. We'll do pivot tables in more depth in other videos. What is a pivot table? It's an analysis tool. So looking at this data for example, what I've got here is some invoicing data. We've got the company name, we've got country, salesperson, order number, the order date, when it's required, when it was shipped, the product name, the unit price, the quantity and the total order value. So what we want to do, perhaps, is ask some questions about this data, such as what were the total sales to each country, or what were the total sales by salesperson, or what were our top 10 sellers uh, during this period. These are the sorts of questions that it's very easy to answer with a pivot table. So such a powerful tool must be really hard to use, mustn't it? Well, actually, it's not. Firstly, select one cell in the data. The next thing to do is to go to the Insert tab. I'm working in Office 2007 here, but this is equally applicable to 2010 and 2013. Go to the Insert tab, and on the far left-hand end, you'll see Pivot Table. So we're going to click this. The first thing that happens is it checks the data. Now, Excel is very good at identifying blocks of data. So as long as your data is in a nice rectangle, then you chose one cell in it. And as you can see, the whole block of data has been selected. So Excel's identified the data correctly for me. The second question is, where do you want the pivot table to be? Now, you can put it on the same worksheet as the data, but in general, it's better to leave it as the default as new worksheet. And this is what you get. So it looks very unhelpful, doesn't it? Probably the easiest way to show you how pivot tables work is to actually create one. Let's take the example of wanting to know what the total sales were by country. If we look over to the right hand side of the screen, you can see the pivot table field list. Now this gives a list of all of the column headings that were in your data. So we want country down the left hand side, perhaps we want country down this side here. Well if you look at the icons in the bottom right hand corner you can see if we want a list down the left hand side we should drop it into this box here. So all I'm going to do is take country and drag it into row labels and hey presto we get a list of all of the countries in our data. We want the total value of sales. This Greek letter here identifies summary values, that's Greek sigma, that's the mathematical symbol for sum. So if I want to add up total value, I can simply just drag order value and drop it into this values box. And there we have total order value by country. That is how simple pivot tables can be. You can then start asking more complex questions. What if I want this broken down by salesperson? Perhaps I want salesperson to appear across the top of my table. Well, looking at these pictures again here, that's the icon that shows what goes across the top. So let's drag salesperson, drop it into that box. And now I have countries down the left-hand side, salespeople across the top. What if I wanted country and then a list of salespeople under that country? Well, that means that I need two things in this left-hand box. And here we are, Argentina with the salespeople. If I want it the other way around, all I have to do is reorder these two. And now I've got Andrew Fuller and all his sales by country. The one that I haven't mentioned yet is Report Filter. So let's imagine that we want to be able to show this data but product by product, for example. Well, what I'm going to do is put the product name into Report Filter like this. What we then get is a drop-down box at the top that says Product Name All. I can then pick a product and this is exactly the same data, but just for Boston crab meat. Or I can go for chai, and there's the same data for chai. Or I can switch it back to all products. And of course, you can select multiple items as well. So we have a filter, which enables us to filter by, in this case, product name. We have salesperson and country down the left-hand side. So we've got Andrew Fuller and then the countries. And we have the total order value. At this stage, I think what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about the tabs that appear when you create a pivot table. As you can see at the top here, we have a pivot table tools group with options and design tabs. So I'm just going to look at the options tab 
for now. On the options tab I'm just going to pick out a couple of interesting commands. The first one is sort. Let's imagine that we want uh, our data sorted by order value. Well here I've clicked into the order value data so if I now sort what you'll see is that that's now in increasing order of value. Click it the other way and you can see now that's in decreasing value order. I might want to sort by country name a to Z, there we are, that's sorted the same data just by country name. If your tabs disappear, because you've clicked off the pivot table. So here I've selected a cell that's not part of the pivot table. If I click back onto the pivot table, the tabs appear. And if you've closed these areas here, the field list is this table on the right hand side. So I'm going to turn that back on. Plus and minus buttons are these buttons here which enable you to expand and contract individual rows. So you can turn those off if you wish to. Now I'm just going to go back to a much more simple picture. So what we have here is all of the salespeople. Perhaps I'm only interested in the top four salespeople. Well, you'll notice this row labels box here has a drop down arrow on it. Now I can select individual people so that only the ones that I select are showing or I can put value filters on in exactly the same way as you would filter ordinary data and pick the top 10. So I want the top four salespeople by sum of order value. And there we are, there's my top four salespeople. So you can pick, I'll just clear the filter again. So you can pick by top four if you want to, by whatever characteristics you've got. Now this area here shows you the sum of order value. If I right click where it says sum of order value and choose value field settings, so instead of sum I might choose I want the average. So there's the average order value by salesperson. I'm going to put it back to sum. So right clicking here is one option. The Ribbon also has access to that command, so at the moment I've chosen order value. If I choose field settings, same dialog box, put it back to sum. Now let's suppose I want a graph of this data. I think probably first of all I will sort it by um, value. On the pivot table tools options tab, there's a button for pivot chart. If I click on that, I'm just going to choose the first chart, and I now have a chart representing the data in my pivot table. So if I change the data here, let's just pick just Alice Mutton, I get a chart for just Alice Mutton. Change it back to all again. This data does not automatically refresh. So if you add more data or change some of the data, in the source data that you're using, you will need to hit this button here, which is the refresh button. And that takes a fresh copy of the data for the purposes of analysis. So it is not a live link to the data. You have to refresh it. That is the basics of pivot tables. People talk about them as though they're some mystical creation, but actually they're very easy to use and they are incredibly powerful. So I hope that's been useful and I hope that you'll start using pivot tables to answer some of the questions that people are asking about your data. Look out for more videos in our series on pivot tables.